Hello, I welcome Wim van Helden with me here. He is originally from the Netherlands, but working in Austria at the moment as head of the thermal storage group in the Austrian Institute I in Tech. And I welcome Mohamed Farid here with me. You're originally from Iraq, but you are now professor at the university in Auckland, New Zealand. You are both dedicated storage tank experts and you have your keynotes on this conference. But I think you're working on very different aspects of this technology. So, Mohamed, uh, you emphasize uh, passive energy storages in buildings. Why are they so important? Well, uh, passive application is important because it's simpler to apply. You don't need extra uh, equipment. You can use it within the building material itself. You don't see it. So the phase chain material, for example, are material which has ability to absorb and release it and can be used in the building, whether it's uh, wood structure or concrete. And this material has the ability to absorb heat and release heat and capture the solar radiation during the day and release it at night, uh, creating significant energy benefit. I think you have lived and worked in many regions of the world. I think it was Iraq, United States, Malaysia, New Zealand. Is this technology, could, could this be used everywhere? Yes, this technology can be used uh, everywhere, but we need to be careful. It, the basic concepts in using this material, you have significant temperature difference between day and night so that you can, and, and sufficient solar radiation to capture during, in winter. In winter, your objective is to capture solar radiation. In uh, summer, your objective is to capture cooling available at night so that you prevent the temperature uh, in the building from uh, rising. So your material is into, in, brought into the walls of the building while constructing. Yes, the material are usually encapsulate in micro capsules and used in the building materials, so you don't see them. So when they melt and absorb the heat, they don't come out because they are encapsulated. But that is in the passive application, and the phase chain material can be used also in active application where you can use it in heat exchanger and provide heat from solar collector, storing it, uh, and then uh, release it later at, uh, at night, for example. I think, Wim, your active systems is your specialty. You are talking about seasonal storages. Usually this is a big water basin, which is filled with water storing heat from summer to winter. But there are more sophisticated models you do research on today. What is it? And indeed, the challenge is to use as much volume as possible, so to increase the storage density, uh, so to be better than water, in fact. Uh, and we are looking into uh, so-called thermochemical materials that have the ability to not only store more uh, heat per cubic meter, but also to uh, have this heat stored without any losses over long periods. So these materials in the end could be the ideal solution for storing uh, the summer heat for use in winter. So is this um, in big sizes in, in neighborhoods or is this for residential buildings? We uh, started with the first projects for single family houses, uh, and uh, in the meantime now we are also looking into uh, applications for districts uh, or for multifamily houses. Um, the challenge there is that uh, the complete um, heat demand of a house, not only for room heating but also for hot tap water, should be covered by these uh, storage systems. When have, can we wait for market-ready products in this field? Uh, at the moment we are working on uh, products that, that are ready for the laboratory, so they are consisting of components that, that have been built in the laboratory, and now new projects are being started with industry, and the aim of this project is that industry will take over, 
built new components for the systems that have to be demonstrated as single systems. And then we expect that, um, say, the first demonstration systems on the market will be in 2023 or so. Not in 23 years, but 2023. Yes. Okay. How about these compact storages you mentioned on phase change material? Are they market ready or ready? Uh, yes, it's uh, the, as Wim said, the chemical method of storage has a higher density compared to the phase chain material. But the phase chain material are more easier to implement, so you can use them in a heat exchanger uh, arrangement. The technology is less complicated compared to the chemical method of storage, but the energy density is lower, so you, can, you need larger volume to, to, to store. So if you compare your application with the faint change material in the building uh, to the application in compact storages where you uh, store heat for showering, what is uh, more suitable? Well, I personally believe with the phase change material, uh, it may make sense to really implement it in a passive way uh, so that you minimize the cost because it's all come to cost really. You agree on that? Is phase change material for the passive side? In general, I would agree with that, yes. Because of its ability to be integrated into building components, while the challenge for thermochemical materials is to be integrated into the systems, the hot water systems and the heating systems. So for refurbishing, I think that thermochemical, so compact thermal storage materials, and systems are better suited and the uh, phase change materials because they are integrated into building components are more suited for uh, for new to build houses okay thank you so much and enjoy the conference thank you thank you